you're given a chemical symbol and you want to go, the chemical formula, you want to go to the name. So let's put some of the pieces together. Okay, so again, what I like to do is start with the ligands and kind of go forward from there. So ligands, and then we'll do oxidation state, and then finally uh, we'll put everything together. So I have an EN and two of them. Well, EN is, stands for ethylene diamine. So let's write that down. Oh, it's one word. Might not look like it here, but it should be. And you want to make sure there's one M in the ethylene diamine. Okay, there's two of them, uh, and normally two would be di. However, when it's a composite ligand or a ligand that uh, is a bidentate like this one, use the bis tris uh, sort of naming. So instead of di, you would do bis. The reason you do that, hopefully, is slightly more obvious when, when you have this name. If you did diethylene diamine, those dyes look similar. So, and diethylene would be like two ethylene ligands and diamine two amine ligands. It looks, uh, it could mean something different. So if you, uh, especially if you don't see it written, so if you're just hearing it, it's better to hear bis ethylene diamine, then you know, oh, it's two of the ethylene diamines, not two ethylenes and two amines. So bis, whenever you have this kind of composite ligand. Okay, and then we have the NO2, where in your online labs could be named like nitro, but according to your text, which is what we're going to follow, uh, is the nitrito. So that's the uh, nitrito. Ligand. And since the N is listed first, it's an N nitrido. So you put dash N. So to show that the nitrogen is bonding to the iron. Uh, and let's see, I think there's more than one of them. So here we can use the prefix di. Since it's just a simple monodentate ligand, we'll use di nitrido N. Okay, we've got the ligands. They're going to go in alphabetical order when we put them, and so it'll be this one first and this one, because of the uh, E, ethylene, goes before N. So E before N. All right, now for the metal. Let's move on to the metal. We want to know the oxidation state. So the oxidation state of the metal, you got to know the charges of everything here. Let me kind of switch this up on us. All right, so ethylene diamine, its charge is zero. Nitrido, uh, it has a charge of minus one. Sulfate has a charge of minus two. <coughs> if sulfate is minus two, here's the crazy <coughs> part, what's the charge of this entire bracketed ion? plus one, because there's two of them. So think like sodium sulfate, sodium's plus one, so it would be Na2SO4. Uh, oh, and let's get that out of the shiny part. Okay, so again, like sodium sulfate, Na2SO4, sodium's plus one, so you got to put the two there. So in the brackets, it's all uh, plus one. Okay, so then I set up my formula. I'm going to set it up for the bracket. Iron, I don't know its charge, plus two of the nitrido groups at minus one, plus two of the ethylene diamines at zero, equals my overall charge in the brackets of plus one. So iron uh, equals plus one plus two. From there, or plus three, which is a common charge for iron. Okay, the other thing, note that the thing in brackets is a, has a positive charge. 
because it has a positive charge, we're going to name the iron, are we going to name it in English or English? In English. When it's a cation, we name it English. When it's an anion, we name it Latin whenever possible. And end in eight. Okay. Uh, so let's put this together. Get a different color pen. Here we go. This would be, remember the ligands go first in alphabetical, alphabetical order. Bis, ethylene diamine. Uh, close parentheses, still one word, dinitrido. Still one word, dash n dash. Still one word, and now I get to the iron. Iron, three, because it's a positive three charge. Now we finally have a space. Space, sulfate. So just like uh, you would name so something sodium sulfate, Whenever you have a counter ion, that's something on the outside of the bracket. Oh, this kind of went off the screen here. Yeah, a bit. Whenever you have a counter ion, like sulfate or whatever, anything outside the brackets, it's named separately. So just think of any other ionic substance from chem 2A, sodium sulfate, magnesium sulfate. You just list it as is. OK, so that's that one. Let's go on to the next one. Questions? And there's a question. Do you have to have the uh, do you put the parentheses around the ethylene diving? Yeah, we're going to do that uh, following the text. So yeah, we'll do that. So whenever you use a bis or tris, something like that, you'd use parentheses. Okay, any other questions? Oh, wait in the back, yeah. So um, whenever it's the nitrito, do you always do the N and the hyphen? Oh, did you say whenever it's the nitrito? Yeah. Uh, yeah, whenever it's the nitrido, you use the N or the O. If, it's, if it says O-N-O, -O, you dash O. Uh, and I think there's another ligand that does that. I believe it's the thiosulfate. Uh, no, it's the thiocyanide. So it would be thiocyanido S if it bonds to sulfur, or thiocyanido N if it bonds to the nitrogen. And according to our list, those are the only two you need to have that dash N or dash O. It's the SCN ligand and the NO2 ligand. So only those two. Of course, you're not learning all the ligands, but the ligands you know, that's all you have to worry about. Okay. If we're ready, we'll try the next one unless there's another question. All right, let's try the next one. We're going to go backwards now. Now we've got the name, so we want the chemical or molecular formula. So we've got triamine, let's just take it in pieces, triamine, uh, NH3, 3. We've got a bromo, that sounds like just one of them, and we've got a platinum, 2 plus charge, and then we have the counter ion, uh, of chlorine, Cl minus. So the chloride's on the outside of the brackets. Uh, we'll open up our brackets. Now, traditionally, what we do is put the metal first, so that'd be platinum. Then we put anything, oh, and I didn't put the charge on bromine, Br minus. Then we put the anions next, the ligands that are, have a negative charge. And you notice sometimes we don't follow this nomenclature, but this is traditionally what you should do. The BR, and then the neutral ligands next. Okay, and then the counter ion goes on the outside. If it's a minus, just, just, uh, just like in uh, general chem earlier, if it has a minus charge, you put it on the back. If it's a positive charge, you put it on the front. So potassium plus would go in the front. CL minus goes in the back. Now the last thing we want to make sure our charges work. So platinum 2 plus minus 1 for the bromine would give the overall charge for the brackets a plus 1. And the CL has minus 1, so that works out. So if it didn't work out, you'd have to use the subscripts here to get the charge balance. 